Even the simplest of the homemade nerf blasters can be made into eye-catching tactical monstrosities. Here I'm going to do that with my sear carbine. First I'm going to add some stock padding, which I actually do recommend doing. I'm using a beer can koozie that I'm cutting into strips and then tying that right onto the stock with paracord. This is great because if you have a good a favorite sports team you like or some colors you want to add, this is a great way to add a little bit of flair. I did that to a cheek rest and also the uh, shoulder rest there. Really comfortable. Next I'm going to mark out where I want some wood grips using the same red oak I did for the sear carving itself, and I'm going to forget about that for a while. So we're going to move on to a dust cover. Now I'm using one and a half inch uh, PVC pipe, and I'm going to cut out about a third of that. Next I used some scrap of cutting board, cut those into rectangles, and drilled right through them. Now I'm going to attach them right onto those U-channels uh, right there, those half pipes, screw them right in. From there, we can bevel those out very nicely, sink some screws in there, and then that will secure it to the side of our blaster. Uh, do that with two screws so it doesn't rotate around on you. Next we're going to cut some uh, 1 8 inch steel rod, and I cut that to size after marking out where the screws needed to go. That's going to provide the pivot point for our door. Now we need to make the actual opening and closing device itself. So this is the one third of the one and a half inch PVC pipe I was telling you about. I sanded that down and then tried to add some extra rectangles of, uh, of cutting board onto that. Now these were really tight so I needed to ream those out so they spun a lot easier. Uh, but first I'm going to cut out a piece of spring and that is going to rest right on our steel rod. So that's going to act as a pushing force that locks our door closed eventually. I put those pieces of uh, cutting board back on. They can swing nice and freely now. And then we are going to drill holes into those and into the piece of one half inch PVC pipe that we cut out before. Just like that. They're screwed in nice and tight. You can open and shut it. But I forgot the spring and we need to make a little bit of modifications to the door itself. I cut a channel out in the door so it locks forward against the uh, pull rod mechanism and then I shaved off a little bit at the front so it can close more easily. Finally, I took a extra piece of my one and a half inch pipe and screwed it right onto the side there so it would block out the dust completely. So now we have a really cool dust cover, kind of like the uh, M3 grease gun. So that will actually serve some practical purpose but it does add a bit of weight. Next we are going to see if we can throw on a uh, rocket launcher on the bottom. So this is basically just another sear carbine that we're going to put on the bottom. Uh, I won't go into too much detail here because I have a very detailed video on how to do this, but basically just make your piston using some one inch PVC and cap that off with a cutting board and then just secure that on each side with screws. Make sure they're countersunk very deeply so they don't interfere with the inside of the plunger tube and there we are countersinking. From there just screw them in and then we can make our plunger head which is just from uh, one and a half inch and one a quarter inch neoprene fender washers. Screw that right on the front and then that will provide the air seal that we need to make basically our piston. Uh, this looks like we're getting pretty close to being done. Now we just need to mark off what we need to what we need to cut. Mark where your dowel is going to go Again, I'm going to use nylon because it's stronger and uh, I just don't have access to oak dowels now. Screw that out, or drill that out, and then throw your dowel right in there. Make sure it's nice and flush, and then screw that into the rear part of the cutting board so it doesn't rotate around on you and doesn't slide out. From there, we're going to start blueprinting what we need to cut out. I'm going to, again, mark where the dowel is on each side, and that's the material we're going to save. After that, I'm going to plug that into our vise uh, and then just use a drill bit to drill out all the parts we don't need. From there, saw out the edges and then use your knife just to score down where those smaller holes are. If you want, again, the full details, I have a 17 minute long video on how to make a sear carving. This is just the miniaturized version of one that we're putting on the bottom. That should pop out really quickly now, just like that and then saw that out or uh, file that clean so you have less sharp edges in there. 
Now I'm going to show you where to put the, the hole for the slot. We're going to drill that slot out using a straight edge, just uh, extend those lines out, saw it all the way down, and then clean it up with some sandpaper when you're done with that. Uh, this will be the basis for the, the tube that we're making. Use a rat tail file to clean up the interface between the drill hole and the sawed hole. To help it stand on the, uh, on the main body tube though, we need another uh, PVC half pipe. So I'm going to use one and a half inch PVC for that. I'm going to cut out some 1 8 inch Lexan as well into two, well basically Tetris L shapes like you see there. Uh, make sure that those are nice and sanded down because the edges can be kind of sharp. So once you sand those down, this is going to be what holds our stuff in place. However, the problem is, is that if we drew, screw it directly into the housing, it's not wide enough at the outside edge. So we need to bend our Lexan. This is really cool. This stuff is kind of like sheet metal because you can bend it and it's going to maintain that shape. So if we do this to both sides and we have a kind of dog leg shape like that, do that to both sides, throw it back on the receiver just to test fit, and hey look at that, it fits really securely. Now I'm going to make the handle. So I cut out basically three rectangle shapes, two wood and one uh, cutting board, and then just sanded down the edges to make some nice side plates there. And then we're just going to screw those together to hold everything in place. This is going to be our forward handle basically. I just uh, screwed and uh, countersunk those, and then after sanding down the edges on our L shape, I'm going to uh, screw those basically right into our handle. Repeat that on both sides, make sure everything is nice and flush and doesn't have any sharp edges, and then you can begin to attach everything together. It fits on there nice and well. Now, just drill that in at one or two points on each side, and this is not meant to be super secure, it's just meant to kind of locate this. Now I'm going to just make a mark where our catch surface is going to be and then using two inches of one inch PVC I'm just going to bevel out one side. That's going to be our anti-kinking device for our spring. Once again I'm just going to cut out another piece of cutting board and that will act as the plug on the rear. I'm not using a bushing because that's much longer and takes up a lot more space. Now I only need half of this K26 spring here, so I'm going to use some uh, jeweler's files or needle files to saw that down and then that's going to break in half. No matter how you get your spring to be cut in half though, file it down and sand it down because those edges are sharp on that spring. Now we only need to drill out the hole for our sear and cut it out just like we did with the main slot. So remove that little piece there, sand it down with a file, and you should be good to go. Now grease up the front of your piston head, throw it in there, and then we're going to begin assembling everything together. So it should fit together something like this. First though, we need to drill out the rear, the rear block and part of the receiver as well and put some tape around the anti-kinking device and then screw everything together. Now we can secure the U, the U pipe or the half pipe to our rocket launcher device. I'm just gonna drill some holes and countersinking this part's kinda hard. Uh, so just use a drill bit and a knife to countersink each part and you should be fine. Drill all those holes together and then it should snap on very satisfyingly like this. I had to cut one of those uh, polycarb uh, pieces back a little bit to make everything fit. But now we can just screw in all the way through our polycarb uh, plates and into our rocket launcher part. And I added more screws on the side but we didn't see that. Even with that half pipe though everything is kind of popping out so I need another piece on the front. I'm going to make a barrel for the bottom part of the rocket launcher to secure everything to. And then I'm going to wrap some tape around it so our rockets fit snugly. And from there I'm going to take some extra cutting board, cut out the holes in the correct positions, and then just hook them across each other. So now that's not going to move at all, especially once we sink some screws in the bottom piece like that. There we go. Now all we need is a trigger device. I tried initially making a sear out of cutting board, but it just wasn't cutting it, so I eventually moved to uh, polycarb or Lexan side plates and a polycarb catching mechanism. So here, cutting board just isn't gonna cut it. This is the end result. You could see it locks back, catches with just a little tooth that extends inward and then pull upward and it goes forward by the spring force. So we're doing pretty good. And finally, I'm going to attach those side plates that we forgot about from the beginning. Now let's see how it goes. 
we have increased the weight of this from two pounds naked to four pounds. So we've doubled the weight of this to add a dust cover, a rocket launcher, uh, the barrel assembly, and a little bit of padding. Anyway, I hope you like these tactical mods and uh, can go a little bit crazy with your homemades too. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. Next objective, one star.